considering Tommy Thompson for Moscow, but that Tommy was probably uh, reluctant to go. I just wanted to tell you that last night at a dinner party, I had a long conversation with Jane Thompson, whom I know very well, and, and uh, she said without qualification that if you wanted Tommy to go and you personally made it clear to him you wanted him to go, they'd go with pleasure. Now, this isn't something Dean Russ can do, and I haven't talked to him about it. I just want you to know that for whatever you chose to do with it. All right. Uh, I'm more worried about about him leaving here, Bob. Well, so am I, but I think that, that uh, with Kohler back here and with the other Russian experts they have over there, Mr. President, you'd be well served by him in Moscow, and I haven't heard anyone suggest anyone else who is qualified for the post. It's likely to be an extremely important post during the remaining years of your presidency. The next four or five years can be extremely important over there. And he is admirably qualified to carry it out, far better than, than anyone else in the country. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Bob. Um, they've given me, yeah, these things have a way of appearing. Yeah. Evidently, there was some article on this last night. I didn't see it, but somebody mentioned it to me. Uh, they say there's a fellow named Davis who is young and very able and very fluent, probably the most fluent one we have in uh, Russian, in Romania. They say there's a fellow named Packard or something that uh, he's from some other embassy that's very good in this field. They say, and I, uh, I don't know whether this is just image or not, but they say Reinhardt in Italy is very good. Now, the three or four separate reports I've had on Reinhardt is he's not heavy above the shoulders, that he's dull, that he looks like Brooks Brothers, he's an attractive looking fella, but that he's not too sharp and keen and so forth. Uh, that may be just some of the the boy is giving him the works. Kohler says he's one of the most brilliant fellows he's ever dealt with. Have you ever dealt with him? Not uh, extensively. I stayed there for one night last week. Uh, he was in Naples, sick in the hospital. I talked to his wife at some length, and I know, I've known him before. He's well thought of in Italy, but I don't think he's had any any really important substantive uh, effect on them or on us as a result of his his tour there. I would think he wasn't heavy enough for Moscow. Uh, the problem is getting in with the Russians, and we haven't had many ambassadors that can do that. Uh, Thompson was one of them. Another one they suggest is Mosley, who is head of Columbia Institute. I don't know. Him. Who's written that extensively in the field, uh, who is well regarded by the Russians, and uh, who speaks the language fluently, and about the one of the few. Uh, they keep sending us feelers that they'd like to have a businessman. Well, you're not uh, going to find one who speaks the language, and that's no, a serious that's, handicap. That, that certainly is, and I about convinced yesterday that we had to have the language after I listened to Kohler. He said that you wake up in the morning, you can't read the paper. You go down, you can't talk to the fellow that serves you your breakfast. You go read your cables, and then you start having to make calls, and you can't talk to anybody. You have to get an interpreter. Then you go to reception, and you just stand out by yourself. Nobody can communicate with you. Then you get invited out on the weekend. You can't carry your interpreter with you. <laughs> I'd strongly urge you not send anyone who can't speak it, Mr. President. Just in my own contacts with foreigners, I notice how difficult it is to deal through an interpreter. I think it'd be particularly troublesome there. As far as Thompson's value here is concerned, I think you're going to lose him. He's got some serious financial problems. He spoke to me long ago, a year and a half ago, about leaving the government. Uh, so you can take account of that as well. Some of those other names on there may be very competent. Mostly I've read writings of, but I don't know him. I don't know how he's negotiating, how sensitive he is to what can be done. He's the International Institute. Yes, I um, you might ask some of your friends without telling the purpose. Right. Yeah. Uh, do you think that uh, we have enough strength here with the with the second graders uh, to, uh, to to 
evaluate for us carefully what effect a bombing of Haiphong's yes. going to have. Yes, I do, Mr. President, and particularly I feel that with Kohler coming back and being in the position he's in, and with some of these others that you spoke of uh, available to, to fit into the, the staff of the State Department. Although I have the highest regard for what Thompson has done in the past several years in advising you and the Secretary of State on that Russian attitude. Yes, I do, too. I feel very, very comfortable. Absolutely invaluable at times. But I do think you'll get it now from these others. I've got a rather uh, uh, desperate and pathetic appeal from San Francisco mayor at 2 o'clock in the morning. He says they're about to declare martial law that uh, the withdrawal of MDTA fund, that's manpower training funds, I guess, manpower training development fund, uh, to please do something about that and please get some action in there of some kind to take these youths off the streets and put them, get them busy. I told Califano to try to get one of your best men to see if there's anything that they might explore in the way of your industrial people up there, your Navy Yards or any of the other things that where they might uh, yeah, be cleaning the streets or something. I told them to get Striver and told them to get to Words and have a meeting the next hour. So we can answer that thing. Uh, uh, these people are are um, these old dogs won't hunt anymore. They 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 just drive themselves out of the ballpark and they with these things. You see the Maddox election and the Johnson yeah, election I, in Arkansas. Uh, my first thought this morning was this was a real blow at Brown. Oh, it's, yes, and it's real blow at Brown, but what we're doing, Bob, with the Maryland and with Maddox in Georgia and with the McKeithen in Louisiana and with the Wallace in Alabama and Johnson has been reasonable and friendly to him in Mississippi, but he can't hold any more. He and uh, the others can't. And with Mansfield going the way he went yesterday, he just turns his tail every time something comes up on on the amendment uh, to that we're going too fast with guidelines. Now, there's a great revulsion taking place, and it's going to be a pretty solid front against us in the South, which when put with the Republicans, gives them control. And I'm not sure that the North is not going to be about as bitter. The dailies are awfully bitter, and, uh, and you can see the, the New York situation. So we, uh, we're in trouble on the civil rights thing. I don't know how to... Uh, they, they're writing amendments now in the report saying that we're going too fast. And I don't see that. I see a damn thing. I, unthinkable to me that in 11 or 12 years you can't carry out the law of the land. I noticed that the poll showed 52%, the highest percentage for a long time, yes. of people who thought we were going too fast. It's a damn shame because you're going to get both forces, as you just said, working against you. You're going to get the blacks on one side and the whites on the other, and both of them are going to erupt. I don't know what you are as a politician, but somebody, we've got to think about it. They tell me I can't pass my demonstration cities bill. And I thought you're the only one I know that's got any contact with Bobby. Uh, that, uh, I talked to Weaver yesterday, and I don't think he respects Weaver very much. I don't think he likes anybody in the White House very much. Uh, I might, Wirtz might have some influence with him. Uh, he and uh, Rebikoff are opening up their hearings again on the cities. And they've killed it just dead as hell up to now. And now we've got a rule and we're bringing it up to try to get our nose under the tent. The Republicans are claiming that we're going to bust children and stuff under the demonstration cities bill. But they're going to start the hearings, and then that's what just scared them to death. That's why we're having such a hell of a thing on, on poverty. We've, we've had them there, and we've bought them, and we've sent airplanes for them and everything else. We've been winning the votes by 143 to 118, stuff like that, for the last two days now. But if they have these hearings and get these fellows talking about trillion dollars again, I just won't get 50 votes for it. If I could, they told Joe Califano, they promised him that they would uh, not hold hearings till January. But they get on that television and they get in uh, these mayors and they say, we've got to have 60 million. That's the minimum we get by with. And others said, well, you've got to have 100 million. And when you get them added up, it adds to three quarters of a trillion. And then you imagine yourself coming from a little district in Hattiesburg. Mississippi, and you vote for a program like it. I can't get a Texas vote for it. 
Not even the cities like Houston, San Antonio, they won't vote for it because they get themselves into a trillion dollar program. So we got to think some way in your social contacts. You can't say, let's get demonstration cities under the wire and then build on it like we build on poverty and like we're building on the others, but let's get the, the power. And that's what we need well, to I'll, do. I'll call Joe, California, and learn yeah. something about do it. I don't thing about the status of the bill, but I'll learn well, something about it. Well, I'll tell you the status. Talk intelligently to Bobby about status it. Status has passed the Senate. It's passed the House Committee. Patman got it out for Marvin. He went up there and got him to work on it. He couldn't get a rule on this hearing. We finally got a rule. Now, it's going to be taken up in the next week or so when we get through the tax bill and other things. If we could just get it up, and then we'll really, we've got to fight for our lives. We, we don't know whether we can pass it or not. But we know that if we have a bunch of hearings, yeah. they think it helps, the hearings that it, it concerns them. But you know what a trillion dollar figure does, Bob, for a congressman. Yeah. Okay. I'll now, do it. now, what shape you are you in on your defense appropriation? Uh, Russell is just continuing to try to get speed, and he hasn't decided uh, what what to do. I was going to see him the other afternoon when we went down to Cape Kennedy, and when I couldn't, Cy went over and talked to him. And uh, he he just says that he's not going to move until he figures out how to kill that Rivers Reserve Bill, which has passed the House and which is a lousy bill. There's no question about it. They only got five votes against it in the House, though. Mayon has said to us, we just have to kill a bill in the Senate. We said to him, well, why didn't you do something in the House about it? Well, he says, thought we could handle it in the Senate, which I think we can with Russell, who is very much opposed to it, but who, is, who, as part of his tactics in opposing it, holds up this defense appropriation bill. I'm not too concerned about the defense bill, Mr. President. I think it'll come through all right, but I, I'd be damned if I know how to, how to handle Russell on this matter. Do you have any trouble with your Navy planes? I notice where you happen to have Laird's report and you have the get authority, you report to no, the committee no, on no, your transfer. No, no, no. Do they have to give you the authority? They have to give us a, what we call a reprogramming action, which the committees have the authority to do, which we requested the day I made that announcement. I had to make the announcement that day because we had to send the action up to Congress for the reprogramming authority, and we've been told by, by Mahon and, and uh, Russell and the others will have no problem at all. As a matter of fact, I've already gone to the companies and worked out the schedules with them, so that uh, I think we're in good shape on that. What do you see in the appropriation now? Well, uh, $66 billion of expenditures uh, is still the best estimate I can give you. With a, at the moment, it looks about 11 to $12 billion of, of uh, new obligation authority. That damn layer, that's what he said yesterday. Yeah, but when this comes out, Mr. President, uh, if and when it does, we ought to put it on the expenditure basis, because that's what affects the budget, and that's what's thought of, and that's only $7.5 billion. So I propose, whenever you get to that point, to turn all of the public statements to that figure. Is there any way that you can put any years in economic? No. You're you doing, a, are you doing? No, they're doing the reverse, Mr. President. They're, we're carrying their, a lot of their costs. I don't know how much it's up to now. I keep a record of it here. It's well over 100 million, I think, because they just don't have the money. So we're paying for many things on a military front that normally would be paid for out of economic. It's a rather dangerous practice that Congress has asked us to supply information to them on how much we're doing and so on. One of these days we're going to clobbered with it, but we definitely can't do the reverse. They just don't have the money. Okay, much better. Thank you.